So you're all energized, right? And you're fueled up. You're ready to blast across that piece of paper. You're going to be king of that piece of paper and draw three-dimensional drawings. Now, we're going to be using a very, very special art word today called repetition. Repetition really is pleasing to your eye when you draw something that's a repeated pattern or repeated objects down the line. Now, we have two club members that are drawing with us today, Cindy and David. You guys ready? You all loosen up, ready to draw? Yeah. Okay, loosen your hands up. Oh, you guys don't look energetic enough. No. <laughs> Are you sure you're ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so listen one more time. All right, now you have your pencils out. We'll start by drawing that two-headed creature. We'll use repetition on little um, bumps or some kind of spires on the back of the two-headed creature. Start right here in the center of your piece of paper. Draw, oh, an oval shape or an egg shape. And then we'll draw two heads. Now we'll use repetition, repetition of design on both sides. I'll show a little bit of symmetry and balance. Draw the head over here. We'll draw a real cute, almost a furry dinosaur shape. Draw the head. So you're building the cartoon character right now. Now, Al told you about building cartoon characters. And I'm doing the same thing right here. Starting with the basic shapes. Using a nice, gradual S-curve coming down through here. Okay. Coming off the back of the neck right here and around. Okay, really loose and sketchy. We'll draw the, the legs coming down here, and then we'll draw some loose boots or tennis shoes. Cindy, should I put some tennis shoes on here? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I like the boots. <laughs> you want boots? Yeah. I already, already made the tennis shoe too short for a boot. Oh. Make it those new kind of tennis shoes that are out now. They're real soft. Soft tennis shoes? Well, soft boots, really. They yeah. look like sponges almost. And then we'll draw the eyes. Over here, see overlapping, this eye, and this eye overlaps back behind. Draw a lip, curve the smile around like this. Draw another lip underneath here. Are you keeping up with me okay? Yep. Yeah. Draw an eye right here, an eye right here. Then we'll do the same thing. We'll repeat this design on the other side. We'll draw an eye right here, overlap the design behind. Draw the top of the lip to give him a big smile. And then another little lip bit down here. Now, you can make this mouth open if you want to to make a little bit of variety. But I want to make it a, just a repeated pattern on both sides. Draw the back of the neck down here. Look at these nice S-curves. See how graceful it makes this neck look? If you're drawing a brontosaurus or a dragon or even a person or human being, you can use an S-curve going through the neck. Now, we're going to repeat this pattern. See these little tiny scales on the back? I'm going to repeat this all along the back of the little monster here, little creature. And I'll do the same thing all the way up toward the eye. Now let's take a moment and get to know a club member a little bit better. Hi, I'm Vlad Karabkov. I'm 13 years old and I'm going to ninth grade to the Baltimore School of the Arts. I work with charcoal and watercolor. Recently I've switched from pencil to pen and been drawing cartoons with ink for the last couple of months. This one is called Cat Food. It came to me when I was thinking about a way to use cat food theme in a cartoon. I'm going to add some spots along the back of the dragon right here. I'll use repetition again and repeat this pattern of a large spot, a smaller spot, and a medium spot right here. I'll do the same thing over here. Put a large spot, and then a smaller spot, and then a medium spot. And then I'm going to continue the spots going up the neck all the way up. So you can make your drawing enhance a little bit with these little patterns. That's what art is all about. Al Gross was here, and he has some cartooning techniques he's sharing with our club members. Let's take a look at what they're doing. Hi, I'm here with Vlad and Tim, and uh, we're going to draw some cartoon characters today. Okay, you guys like to draw cartoon characters? Yep. yep. Right, that's good. I've got brought some characters with me. Uh, we're going to do a little something that's fun with them uh, uh, in about a minute. Right here, I've got a character, and you know, char cartoon characters communicate to the viewer. So hopefully, if I've used everything correctly, costuming, props, facial expression and so forth, you should get some idea of what this character is supposed to be. Can you mm -hmm. tell me what he's supposed to be? Does he look like anything to you? Caveman. Hey, he looks like a caveman. That's what I had in mind anyway. What tells you that? It's, it's his club and his clothes and stuff. Yeah, his club, his clothes. He's wearing a particular type of uh, uh, an outfit. He's got this sort of animal skin with the spots on it, sort of like the spots that uh, Commander Mark was putting on the uh, two-headed monster. And uh, the way his hair is arranged, and he's got sort of that protruding, 
primitive Neanderthal type brow and so the forth. The teeth. Yeah, the teeth too. Sort of give them that gap in the teeth to give them kind of a, a primitive expression. And uh, I brought another character too. Now this one's, uh, something's been done to it and I think you're gonna see what's gonna happen in a minute. But uh, if we lay this up against here and we look at this character, first of all, did I get the message across? Did I use the costuming and the gesture and so forth to uh, communicate with the viewer about what the character is? Yeah. Well, it looks a lot different than mm -hmm. a caveman. Yeah, what kind of a character is it? It's more of a uh, more intricate, well, not as much intricate, but refined. Refined. I, I had in mind a ballerina, you know, mm. the ballet slippers with the ribbons up the uh, uh, leg, the tutu, the costume, the feathered headdress, the eye makeup, and so forth. How does she sort of stack up as compared to that uh, uh, caveman? And uh, Tim said uh, refined. What do you think, uh, Vlad? Uh, how do they how do they stack up if you compare one to the other? They the look armor? a little different from yeah. one another. Yeah. Well, the thing is, they're totally different. They don't have anything in common between the two of them. So that by slitting these pages in half, I can make some sort of uh, comic changes occur. You know, we've got the. Uh, uh, the caveman's head on the ballerina's body. It's an old shtick, but it works. It's still funny. I, I like this one, too. Yeah. So, if you, you know, cartoon characters are fun to look at in and of themselves, but if you get them to interact with one another, they're, they're even more fun. So what I'd like for you to try to do is to come up with a, a couple of characters that we can use uh, in booklet form. And what you have to do here is to divide up a piece of paper apart for the head, body, legs and try to you dream up one character you dream up another one we'll put them together and we'll see how they interact make sure that you center the neck and make sure that you center where the legs meet and then you can sort of try to get them to fit together okay let's see what you can do 